welcome young and old, gay and straight, married, single, bisexual, transgender, welcome. People of all colors, cultures, and abilities, welcome. Noisy, wiggly babies and children of all ages, welcome. Rich and poor, powerful and weak, believers and questioners and questioning believers, welcome. Welcome all you who seek God's graceful, open-hearted love and the beautiful new world that love makes possible. Welcome, children of God. Beloved of God, good morning. The Kent United Church of Christ welcomes you. We are an open and affirming and accessible to all congregation. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. For an order of worship, please click show more beneath the YouTube video and you can download today's bulletin. This is Trinity Sunday. The Sunday always after Pentecost when the Holy Spirit descended upon all flesh empowering the disciples and all those gathered with Christ's spirit. The concept of the Trinity speaks to our experience of the divine as not only all that is, but also to the different natures of the divine. We are invited to encounter God as three in one. God the parent, Jesus the Christ, and the feminine face of God, which is Sophia, or wisdom, the breath of life, that which we most commonly refer to as the Holy Spirit. The lectionary lifts up many scripture readings for Trinity Sunday. We will have three appropriately this morning. They remind us to remain confident in God's love and to be confident that we are heirs of God, co-heirs with Christ, and co-partners with the Holy Spirit. Certainly, as with the church of all ages, we express our faith in the divine, recognizing its mystery with the awareness that words are not sufficient. I want to thank Warner and Judy Mendenhall for the beautiful peonies decorating our chancel this morning. For this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Please join me in the call to worship. In the name of the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning, the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. In the beginning, God said, Let us make humankind in our image. And so we came into being created by God who exists in community. We are here as God's community to worship the source of our being and to recommit to restoring the beloved community Jesus envisioned. Let us pray. Holy Mother, you have birthed us into life. Holy Father, you have nurtured us along our way. Holy Spirit, breath of life, sacred mystery. In you we live and move and have our being. To you we bring our offering of praise and thanksgiving and our offering of pain, lament, and work for unity and justice. We open ourselves to your presence in this time of worship. Fill us with resolve and purpose to be your beloved community and to expand our boundaries until all of creation is renewed and all people are honored and blessed. Fill us with conviction and a passion for justice until black lives matter, brown lives matter, and transgender lives matter. This we ask through the risen and ascended Christ who lives and reigns with us in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ten rules. Ten rules. Ten rules. Ten rules of survival. Ten rules of survival if stopped by the police. Number one, be polite and respectful when stopped by the police. Be polite. Be respectful. Remember that your goal is to get home safely. Your goal is to get home safely. Your goal is to get home safely. I'm sorry. Number two. If you feel your rights have been violated, you and your parents have a right to file a formal complaint with your local police jurisdiction. Number three, do not, under any circumstances, get in an argument with the police. Number four, always remember that anything you say or do can be used against you in court. Number five, keep your hands in plain sight. Make sure the police can see your hands at all times. Number six, avoid physical contact with police officers. Do not make any sudden movements and keep your hands out of your pockets. Number seven, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not, do not run, even if you are afraid. Even if you're afraid. Number eight, even if you believe you are innocent, do not resist arrest. Number nine, if you are arrested, do not make any statements about the incident until you are able to meet with a lawyer or public defender. Number 10, stay calm and remain in control. Watch your words. Watch your body language. Watch your emotions. Remember. Remember. Remember, your goal is to get home safely. Get home safely. As we bow down before the Lord our God together this morning, I invite you to enter this time of prayer by taking a deep breath. Breathe in the breath of God, the breath of life, the breath that is keeping you alive and know that that very breath is indeed the Holy Spirit within you. We all need a deep breath. For we're all just trying to get home safely. All of us called to walk each other home. Let us pray. Holy God, we were created in your image an image of mutuality and respect for one another, an image of a dance ever moving, ever in tune, one with others, an image of beloved community with shared blessing and mission. You have given us responsibility for the work of your hands. Forgive us, God, 
we have denied our purpose. We have abused the Earth's resources for our own selfish gain, and the consequences wreak havoc upon the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the Earth. Forgive us, God, we have defiled your image. We have regarded some of your children as other or even less than human. We do not believe deep down that some lives different from our own matter. We have not faced our own privilege, our own fragility, our own sense of superiority as white folks. We have not done our work. We have let our siblings die. Forgive us, God, for we have sinned. Forgive us, God, for we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, God, for we have gravely sinned. God offers us grace when we don't deserve it. God accompanies us even in our ignorance, arrogance, and resistance. God desires to see our broken relationships restored and has heard our prayer. In the name of Jesus the Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit and because of that amazing grace of God, we are forgiven. Praise be to God who does not give up on us. Thanks be to God, who is still forgiving. Amen. As we share the peace of Christ with one another, whether by text this morning or by phone call later, or a greeting card in the mail later this week, or by simply raising your hands to the world, and energetically sending peace to all, I invite you to be comforted by this peace that passes all human understanding, and also to understand this offering of the peace of Christ as an act of resistance. May the powerful peace of the risen and the ascended Christ be with you today and always. Our scripture reading for this Trinity Sunday are from the Hebrew Bible, the Gospel according to Matthew, and Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. Listen now for a word from God. God spoke, Let us make human beings in our image. Make them reflecting our nature so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. Meanwhile, the eleven disciples were on their way to Galilee, headed for the mountain Jesus had set for the reunion. The moment they saw him, they worshipped him. Some, though, held back, not sure about worship, about risking themselves totally. Jesus, undeterred, went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near in this way of life, marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I'll be with you as you do this, day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal and agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of Holy Spirit be with all of you. Here ends the reading from God's word. Thanks be to God who is still speaking.
I have entitled my sermon this morning, The Big Three. For all the This Is Us fans out there, Eileen and Gail, I'm thinking especially of you, you may have thought I would be referring to Kevin, Kate, and Randall this morning, the three siblings from this heartwarming TV drama, which also happens to be one of my favorites. Or maybe some of you thought I would speak about history and the big three allied powers during World War II, Great Britain, the Soviet Union, and the United States. This grand and mighty alliance was the key to victory, even though we did not share political aims. If my dad, brothers, Ben Dunlap, or Dick Simons had to guess, they might think I'm talking about the legendary big three in basketball. Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, and Manu Ginobili from the San Antonio Spurs. This trio was unstoppable, one of the most successful in NBA history. And by the way, it bears noting that Duncan is from the Caribbean, Parker is French, and Manu is, of course, Argentinian. These three men of color with all the makings of a great American team. Or we could shout out, of course, to Jordan, Pippen, and Rodman, who played for the Chicago Bulls, of course, and in their three years of playing together, that big three won three NBA titles. But that's not the big three I'm going to talk about either. Some of you, those of you who follow in the lines of Edith Chase, our environmentalist and conservationist that made such an impact on this church and our world, may think I'll talk about Rachel Carson, that great marine biologist and conservationist who pointed out that the big three, according to her, were that each of us carries in our veins a salty stream in which the elements sodium, potassium, and calcium are combined in almost the same proportions as sea water, she writes in her book, The Sea Around Us. My husband offers this up almost all the time. The rule of thirds or the rule of three, whether in his photography, graphic design, leather work, or any medium he's working with, the rule of three in design is foundational. Things arranged in threes are said to be more attractive and interesting because they're asymmetrical. But in that asymmetry is order, also making the design more effective. Once you begin reflecting on all the big threes, you find it hard to stop. After all, who doesn't recall fond memories of making Rice Krispie treats? Judy Mendenhall, now I'm thinking of you. Remember the old commercial, Snap, Crackle, Pop? If we could have our usual after worship coffee hour, we could have served Neapolitan ice cream, the classic chocolate, strawberry, and vanilla combo, the big three served up in one container, a way we often use to explain the Trinity to children. But it is Trinity Sunday, after all, a Sunday in our liturgical calendar intentionally set apart as an invitation for us to encounter the divine as three in one. That's the big three, commonly referred to as the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, this is the traditional language for the Trinity, connecting the churches of this generation to our ecumenical life as part of the universal church, especially in the sacrament of baptism, as we heard in our scripture from Matthew that Stephanie read this morning. But this traditional language is, for many, an obstacle to an intimate relationship with God because it incorporates only male language and images for God. And as theologian Mary Daly put it, if God is male, then male is God. 
But she doesn't stop there, adding, the divine patriarch castrates women as long as he is allowed to live on in the human imagination. If God is male, then men are God. Similarly, theologian and professor James Cone was known to ask questions like these. How can we understand the fullness of who God is if we only visualize Jesus as a blonde or at best dirty blonde haired white man with blue eyes? If our only images of the Christ are such, then how does that influence our language? How does that influence our God talk? How does that influence our understanding of who God is, who Jesus is, and who the Spirit is? And then he would pierce into the eyes of his students and ask us, can we really understand the meaning of Jesus on a Roman cross without seeing him through the image of blacks on the lynching tree? How do you envision God? How do you envision Jesus? We could also look at the so-called giant triplet issues of racism, materialism, or capitalism, and militarism on this Trinity Sunday. This big three was named by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in his Beyond Vietnam speech at the Riverside Church in 1967. But listen to these eerily relevant words again. I am convinced that if we are to get on the right side of the world revolution, we as a nation must undergo a radical revolution of values. We must rapidly begin the shift from a thing-oriented society to a person-oriented society when machines and computers, profit motives, and property rights are considered more important than people. The giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism are incapable of being conquered. King understood that these big three not only coexisted and still do, but they cooperate. They converge. They are intersectional. He would go on in this most controversial speech of his, asking how Christianity strengthens these big three, lives out these three grave sins of his time and ours. Racism, materialism, and militarism have seeped into the pores of our faith and our church including the very fundamental ways we name, envision, understand, and follow God as three in one. He would ask, how do we name who God is in a way that demands that we as the church dismantle and decolonize not only our society, but the church itself, which is always a reflection of society at large. Friends, these are trying times, but they are amazing times. We have experienced the great slowing down of this global pandemic only to emerge ever so slowly and timidly and yet for some fierce like that sacred fire into now what I am calling the great waking up. We have been here before, yes, as a nation, but dare I say, never like this. As one dear friend put it, I may have lived through the civil rights movement, but I didn't actively participate in it. Jim Wallace of Sojourners describes it this way. In my lifetime, I have never seen more white people involved in the deep and growing movement to address systemic racism, structural injustice on many fronts, and specifically the violent policing and killing of black people. Never. At the core of this movement, my friends, at the core of this struggle, which is all of ours, 
At the core of all the protests and the marches and the demands is a call for us to examine how we understand God and thus how we name God, how we name and visualize God individually and collectively as this church. We cannot be engaged in a movement that sees God as only male or only white or only anything. God's too big for that. Just as we have had to interrogate our language about why black lives matter, understanding that inherent in that concept is the affirmation that of course all lives matter, but it's the black lives that have been dehumanized and so to say all lives matter is not only missing the point as we already know it's offensive and an obstacle to the movement actually moving. Language matters. Images matter. Today is Trinity Sunday. How do we name God? How do we visualize who God is? We all must interrogate that for ourselves. That's where the movement begins, by decolonizing our own God talk, our own theology. To pray only to our Father is to deprive us of who God is how expansive and all-inclusive and beautifully diverse God is. This is why one of our three scripture readings for this Trinity Sunday is from Genesis, so that we are continually reminded that we were all created in God's image, all of us reflecting God's nature. My friends, let us seek, let us commit to incorporating other images which point to broader understandings of the substance and characteristics of the holy mystery, which is our triune God. Giver, gift, and Holy Spirit, maker, lover, keeper. You recall the prayer from the New Zealand Book of Prayer, which includes images from the indigenous Maori people, referring to God as earth maker, pain bearer, and life giver. Perhaps we refer today to the Trinity a concept, by the way, never found in the Holy Scriptures, but was rather a construct created by the Church Fathers. What if we talked about the Trinity this morning as pandemic, protest, and Pentecost? We will not change our society, our relationship to the other, our relationship to one another, until we change our understandings of the relationship we have to God. How do you name who God is? Jesus is, the Spirit is, and why? Each of us has our own experience of the divine, our own encounters, and our own social, economic, racial location from where we learned who God is. And it's all too narrow. In the midst of this global pandemic, we are called to protest the injustice that God did not create, but that we have brought about. But we have been given the spirit of Pentecost, the empowerment of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, mother of us all, to do what we can to participate in God's reconciling mission. Some of us may not be able to pray with our feet, or are immune, compromised, and unable to join a large gathering of people to protest, but we can do something. And we can start, my friends, my church, we can start by naming our own big three, by finding other images for our triune God that are life-giving, meaningful for us, and not dehumanizing or exclusive of others. So as I close, I invite you this week to think through your big three. Come up with three new names for God and how you experience 
God. Or how you see God. We can only experience the unity, the oneness of all that is. And our unity as children of one God. If we interrogate the language and images we use. Holy, holy, holy. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. God has abundantly bestowed upon us the gift of life, and our best response is to offer our whole lives as agents for God's reconciling mission and unity in the world. Give as you are able to build up the beloved community of God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit in our hearts, homes, on the streets, in this congregation, and around the world. Receive these gifts, even our very lives, for your service, O Lord. Multiply them and our effort to meet the overwhelming needs before us. We are yours, God. Use us as we offer ourselves, we pray. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is upon us because God anointed each of us to bring good news to the poor. God sends us to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, release to all those who are not free, and to declare the year of the Lord's favor. 
Holy God, your spirit inspires us to offer an extravagant welcome to all. You pour your spirit out on all flesh, O God. Your sons and daughters prophesy. The old dream dreams and the young see visions. Still speaking, God, open our hearts to your continuing testimony. Holy One, through your love, we did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but have received a spirit of adoption, making us all part of your family. We rejoice that nothing can separate us from the love of God. With neighbors near and far, we work to change lives, beginning with our own, so that all may know your unquenchable love. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, for moving over the face of the waters, bringing shape and substance to creation. Open our eyes to see the beauty of day and the wonder of night. Make us wise guardians of the earth. Compassionate Spirit, you breathed on dust of the earth, and we became living flesh and blood. As people born in your image, filled with your breath, may we see every life as sacred. Listening, God, you heard the cries of the Israelites and brought them out of the house of bondage. Open our ears to the cries of the oppressed and lead us in confronting injustice in our own day. Blazing God, you gave the law at Sinai to guide us in forming communities. Grant that our community may always do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Spirit of the world, when war and violence scattered the people of Israel and sent them in exile, you searched high and low to bring them back. Gather us in from the east and the west, north and south. Gather us in from joy and despair, hope and loneliness to be here with you. Sophia Wisdom, breath of life, Holy Spirit, you filled the hearts of the first disciples, overcoming their fear giving them courage to speak your truth. Fill our hearts with your courage so we may witness to your abounding love for all people. We remember that on the night of his betrayal and arrest and on the eve of his death at the hands of a dominant power, 
Jesus gathered the disciples for the feast of Passover. Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks for it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body, which is for you. Eat and share this bread in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks and poured out, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ's death, O God, we proclaim. Christ's resurrection, we declare. Christ's coming, we await. Glory to you, O God. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. Welcome all, all to this feast of justice, healing, and wholeness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this sacred moment, we experience your love revealed. We can see a vision of your beloved community with the table so long and so wide that all of your children are there feasting together. Your open invitation to this common table reminds us your love extends further than we can imagine and reminds us that it is now our task to continue extending your love and welcome at this sacred table until all are sitting together at one table together. May it be so. May it be so. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
God calls us from this time of worship to share the joy and hope of abundant life, even in the presence of pain and injustice, to relationship that transcends the barriers of isolation, sickness, segregation, and supremacy, and to do what we can where we are to be the beautifully diverse body of Christ. This is what we were created for. And in the words of the Apostle Paul, we say to you, finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit will go with you and before you today and evermore. My brothers and sisters in Christ, believers all over the world, say amen.